So I have some books to tell you about and it's kind of a lot but I got some good deals and I'm going to stop trying to justify it to you and just get into it because that's what you're here for in order of me picking these up because this is kind of like a collective month, month and a half-ish haul. We have The Ballad of Songbirds and Snakes. I, I do own this book and I have read this book. However, I had the UK cover of this book and it didn't match <laughs> the rest of my Hunger Games books and this was on sale for like 20 20% off I think at Indigo one day and I impulsively bought it so that it would match the rest of my set So I'm going to donate the other copy. I don't know why this is so like thick <laughs> I think because I have it displayed kind of upright on my bookshelf But if you don't know what this is, it is the prequel to the Hunger Games series and it is basically the villain origin story of Coriolina Snow and how we kind of just watch him like slowly devolve into the evil person that he becomes later. So that was fun. I really really liked this book. I am fully still in my Tebow Sauce era. Next, I got, I'm, this is like one of my favorite things that I own. This is the collector's edition, I don't even know if you can see it because it's so reflective, of The Lightning Thief, Percy Jackson and The Lightning Thief. I wasn't gonna buy this, but it was 20 or 30% off and I get an extra 10% off at Indigo with my like plum card, so I bought it. I have loved Percy Jackson since I was a kid. If you've watched any of my videos on my channel at all, you probably know this already, but it's so beautiful. And the book, guys, <laughs> this book is so gorgeous. So this is the cover, right? And it's beautiful, but then it also has sprayed edges and a lightning bolt and I'm obsessed. The pages are so beautiful and there's like little images of like the characters and the creatures. Here's Medusa. I'm so happy I bought this. It was pretty reasonably priced, so I think I ended up paying like $30 for it, and it is proudly displayed on my Percy Jackson shelf. So if you don't know what this book is, it is the first book in the very long <laughs> Percy Jackson series, and I think Disney released this because the first season of the show came out recently, and it follows the plot of this book. Okay, so next, we're going into the bulk of this haul, which is from Book Outlet, and I just cannot control myself when they email me about books that are $7.99, because $7.99 for like a hardcover new release fiction is crazy and that's Canadian so it's like it's like five dollars US or something so I bought six books <laughs> from book outlet because that's what gets me free shipping and the first book that I got is 1984 by George Orwell <laughs> I have surprisingly never read this and I am getting kind of into my classics era I did a full recap of Frankenstein and I actually really enjoyed reading it so I'm excited to read more and this also matches like all the other classics I have so I'm like kind of slowly building up my collection I don't know if I really need to tell you the plot of 1984 I honestly don't really know what the plot of 1984 is there's like an overlord government watching your every move, I think. I think this was written in like the early to mid 1900s, so I feel like this one's gonna be pretty easy to read. Kind of like The Great Gatsby where it feels a lot more modern than other classics. And then, okay, so if you don't know what Book Outlet is, it's a discounted bookstore where they will get kind of bulk orders of books that were like not fit to be sold for whatever reason in bookstores. And for the most part, every book I've gotten from Book Outlet has been in like pristine condition, like no issues at all. Some of them had like a little mark on the bottom, like nothing that bothers me that I even really notice. However, this is the first one I have gotten that has had an actual like defect and it's fine. Like I, I, I knew what I was getting into, right? So this is Kingdom of the Feared, which I have read this. <laughs> and I own Kingdom of the Wicked and Kingdom of the Cursed in paperback, so I wanted to get this just to like finish the collection. <laughs> um, however, I don't know if you can tell on this, but the entire front cover has been like sliced. It's honestly not that bad. I taped it at the back. I don't know, something went wrong in the process of making this and then someone sliced it somehow. But I really only wanted this to put on my shelf next to the other two books. Spine out. You can't tell. The plot of this series is it follows Amelia and Wrath, who is one of the princes of hell, and the princes of hell are based off of the seven sins. And so Amelia is a witch and she summons Wrath to help her solve her sister's murder, which happens in the first book. And then we kind of get thrown into this world of the princes of hell, and you get taken into their realm. And there's seven of them because there's seven sins, and it's just super interesting, kind of cheesy, fantasy romance, very heavy on the romance, but it was fun to read. And then 
We have two books that are out of my comfort zone, which was one of my goals buying these books, that if I was gonna buy a bunch of books, I wanted to buy a few that kind of checked off some of my reading goals. One of my goals is to read more outside of my usual genres, which is generally fantasy and romance, and that's pretty much it. <laughs> like thriller and mystery in there too. So I got This Is How You Lose the Time War, and I love this cover. It's really beautiful. This one just has, I don't know if you'll be able to see that. It just has a little dot on the bottom, and that's kind of the extent of the damage I've seen on books from Book Outlet. The review on the back of this from V. Schwab just says, holy shit, this was good. So that's promising. <laughs> In the ashes of a dying world, Red finds a letter marked burn before reading. So begins an unlikely correspondence between two rival agents in a war that stretches through the vast reaches of time and space. I think this is like a sapphic romance, kind of. And I'm pretty sure their names are Red and Blue, hence the like birds on the cover. They have nothing in common save that they're the best and they're alone. I'm intrigued to read this for sure. It's pretty short. It's like almost exactly 200 pages and the font is pretty big so I feel like I can read this pretty quickly. And then the next book I got is We Are Not Like Them. The cover of this is so beautiful and again like this one just has a little dot on the bottom and that's it. And this was named Best Book of the Year by Harper's Bazaar and Real Simple. I don't know what year. Let me see. 2022. And this is a book about Jen and Riley who have been best friends since kindergarten but the deep bond they share is severely tested when Jen's husband, a city police officer, is involved in the shooting of an unarmed black teenager. Six months pregnant, Jen is in a free fall as her future, her husband's freedom, and her friendship with Riley are thrown into uncertainty. So this just sounds really, really interesting, really, really topical. I really want to get into more like fiction and fiction by authors that I have not read before because I tend to stick to the same authors. And then I got If We Were Villains by M.L. Rio. I don't know if I've been saying the authors. I feel like I haven't. This one I have been eyeing for honestly a year probably. <laughs> These are like the weird... <laughs> That's a, that's kind of a rude way to start this. Um, I don't hate it, but Indigo released some like exclusive covers of like the randomest books. It was this, Red, White, and Royal Blue, which I have the cover of that one. I actually really like the Red, White, and Royal Blue one. And then Six of Crows and Crooked Kingdom. It does not fit the genre at all. I don't know why they did that. I feel like it doesn't really fit this either, to be honest, but this was, it was like $7. So I bought it because <laughs> I wanted to read this book, which is, I think it's like a dark academia book. It is about seven young Shakespearean actors so Oliver, who's the main character, and his friends play the same roles on stage and off. Hero, villain, tyrant, temptress, ingenue, and extras. When their fourth and final year, good-natured rivalries turn ugly, and on opening night, real violence invades the students' world of make-believe. In the morning, the four fourth years find themselves facing their very own tragedy, convincing the police, each other, and themselves that they are innocent. I think Oliver, our main character, was the one that got blamed for whatever incident happened. I think it's murder. So we kind of are finally getting the true story from him. It sounds kind of murder mystery thrill. It's giving one of us his line almost so I think it'll be a fun fast read and then I got Throne of the Fallen which is kind of what made me make this order because I have wanted this book for since it came out basically this is by the same author as Kingdom of the Wicked's Carrie Maniscalco and it's basically like a spin-off series that follows the other princes of hell and I just think that's such a fun concept like that's what drew me to Kingdom of the Wicked in the first place and Kingdom of the Wicked focuses like pretty much exclusively on Wrath and Amelia, but we got little hints of the other princes and they were so interesting. And so I'm pretty sure this series is gonna be a book for each prince of hell. This one is about Envy who meets Camilla and must embark on a perilous journey through the underworld from glittering demon courts to the sultry vampire realm and beyond while trying to avoid the most dangerous trap of all, falling in love. So again, it's a very classic fantasy romance. I've heard pretty good things about this, so I'm excited to read it. I think this one is classified as adult fantasy. Kingdom of the Wicked was YA, it shouldn't be. It fully shouldn't be. The second and the third book, full spice in those. We're gonna move quickly to book adjacent things and then we'll get back to books. So I picked up this journal. It is, I, I'm not gonna even try and pronounce it. Let, I, I, I just said I'm gonna try and pronounce it and I tried to pronounce it. I wanna start a reading journal. So that's why I got this. And I think these ones are like some of the best quality. And it's just, it's just a bullet journal. And I'm really excited to try <laughs> and keep up with one. I'll definitely make a video setting it up because I think it'll be really fun and like creatively fulfilling and I just got this color because if you can't tell I like the color yellow and then I also this is slightly even less book related <laughs> I got this little palm pal I'm kind of collecting these and putting them on my shelf like palm pals to me are what jelly cats are to other people I love putting them on my little shelf and seeing their little feet stick out this one I bought he's a dragon fruit because his name is Reese and that's it that's why I bought him and then the last physical book that I have picked up is happily never after by Lynn Painter this is her new 
I believe it's an adult romance, and it is about Sophie and Max. They're hired to go to weddings and object to them when people don't want to go through with their wedding, but they're too awkward to call it off, which is just such a fun concept. I love Lynn Painter's writing. I feel like her banter and the just the rom-com vibes in her books are always so good. It's short and sweet. This is like, I think it's 300 pages, not even. It's 250 pages. It sounds fun. I think they originally meet Sophie and Max because Sophie hires Max to object at her wedding, which is a, a fun little meet cute. <laughs> and then I just wanted to briefly talk about some books I got on my Kindle because they're still books. I try to check the Kindle deals of the day pretty often because they're usually range from like 99 cents to like 2 dollars and occasionally they'll have a book you actually really want to read which is nice. So I got The Hurricane Wars by Thea Guanson and this is like a fantasy romance. It's a debut novel and I don't know that much about it and honestly I have heard kind of not great things about it since I bought it. It has reviews from Carrie Maniscalco and Ali Hazel so I do kind of trust them and it is about two bitter enemies with opposing magical abilities that are swept together in the hurricane wars in a spellbinding debut fantasy romance set in a Southeast Asia inspired world ravaged by storms. I'm very interested in that because I feel like most of fantasy books or books that are kind of like mythological in nature are very Roman Greek like set in North America kind of vibe so it, it's nice to have one that is not. <laughs> I got this one by the way for like $2.99 when it was on sale one day and then I also got got When in Rome by Sarah Adams, which <laughs> I have read, by the way. I did read it. I heard great things about this book, so I think I might have gone into it with expectations too high, but I didn't love this. I have I'm gonna be honest, I don't know. I think maybe Sarah Adams is just not for me. The last kind of like 40% of the book redeemed it quite a bit for me because I was ready to DNF it for a bit. <laughs> it just felt very juvenile, even though it's kind of supposed to be an adult romance. I did find it kind of cringy for a lot of it. <laughs> it's a closed door, which I don't mind, but the characters are supposed to be in their like late 20s, early 30s, and the way they interacted sounded very like teenager-y to me. I probably won't read any more by Sarah Adams, but I also understand why people like it. Just not really my taste in romance. And I think that is everything, which is perfect because my camera battery is flashing. Thank you so much for watching. Let me know if you picked up any books recently, any of these books recently. Let me know your thoughts. I will hopefully see you in my next video. Bye.